Hey everyone, welcome to part 2 of my beginner's guide to paint.net. So before we start, I just wanted to say that I'm making this series to help all of you guys out, uh, all you beginners who are new to the program, so, and I can't really do that if I don't really know exactly what you guys want me to cover in these videos, so uh, I can just, you know, decide myself what I think is a good topic to cover, but if you guys actually tell me in the comments or maybe on Twitter uh, what you think my next episode should cover, it would definitely help me out and it will help you guys out so, because I'm helping directly what your suggestions are. So anyways, today we're going to be covering what you probably will be using the most in page on that besides effects is the tools. Tools are basically all the um, adjustments and uh, things you can make in paint.net and that's all on this window right here this is it's pretty small you can't even read the word tools you just said to right there but this little uh long rect vertical rectangle is your tools window so by the way if you're not seeing any of these windows right here tools layers colors and history that you can x them out and if you want to undo that on the top right corner of paint.net you have these four buttons and these are what the windows are so as you can see history is f6 if i click it history is back the hammer is the tools which as you can see is f5 so if i un if i click that the tool window is gone if i click it again it is back so this is your colors and this is your layers so getting back to tools, what, uh, obviously this is a rectangle select I showed you before. It's basically a selection tool uh, that does like a rectangle or just a four-sided shoot and you can warp it all you want. If you hold shift, it does a perfect square. So no matter how much you try to warp it, it'll stay as a perfect square. If you let go of shift, it'll, you can you, it'll go back to rectangles and parallelograms and stuff. Now basically what rectangle select does is it selects on the layer that you're selecting, selects that exact part of the image and you can do whatever you want in that selection. So as you can see, if I do a paintbrush tool now, if I paint something, oh, is that a paintbrush? Yes, no, this is the magic wand, sorry. So if I go to the paintbrush tool, if I paint, I can paint inside the rectangle, but I can't paint outside the rectangle. As you can see, I'm, I'm holding my left click button and I'm painting and stuff, but if I go outside, I can't paint because it's not inside the rectangle select. So this is useful if you want to uh, limit your workflow or your tools to something, and it's a really useful tool uh, like that. Also, if I just uh, if I undo the paintbrush using the by doing Control Z, if I have if I do the rectangle select, you can move that part of the image by itself. So as you can see, I'm moving it, and only that square is movable. I can also resize it by doing that, resize it, make it smaller, right that. And by the way, whenever you're doing any of the resizing, if you're resizing anything, if you hold Shift, it will be the original aspect ratio that it was. As you can see. Uh, this is what it will do to fit. If I let go of shift, it will warp it. If I hold shift again, it will automatically go back to its original aspect ratio. So that is rectangle select. Next, we have the move selected pixels tool. Uh, this is pretty simple. You just move e everything that you have selected. And if you don't have anything selected, it will do the whole layer. So if I go back to rectangle select, if I select this, move selected pixels, I can move that. So, so it looks pretty weird right now. So let me just undo. Let me just make everything white again by selecting everything, going to the paint bucket tool and the colors, making it white, making this primary white and making it all white. You select. Next, we have the lasso select tool, which is another selection type tool, uh, except you can do any free selection, which is really, you can do this and then you can you use the move selected pixels and you can move that. <laughs> it's really cool. The last of select is if you want to, let me just undo everything and deselect, is if you want to, if you don't want a rectangle, you want like an actual shape, you can select, uh, if you if you, if you maybe want to select a face of something, you can outline the face, but it's really hard because you, it's, you know, it's a free mouse. So if you don't have like a stylus or a trackpad, it's going to be hard to try to get the exact shape you want. Like you're not going to get uh, any perfect circles or anything with the lasso select because it is completely freehand. Next, we have the move selection tool. So the difference between the move pixels or the move selected pixels and the move selection is if I move the, if I use the move, as I showed you before, the move selected pixels moves the picture that the selection chose. So as you can see, it moves the white because the selection uh, was selected on that white. Let me undo. But if I use the move selected pixels tool, it doesn't move uh, what uh, the picture that's selected, it moves the actual selection. So if you made your selection wrong, and instead of deselecting it, you can actually use the white arrow and move only the selection around. It won't touch the image. So I'll show you with an example. If I do a paintbrush again, I'll do, oh, sorry, it's white. I'll do, I'll do J. So as I showed you before, if I select the J, 
go to the blue move selected pixels, it'll move the J and whatever selected because and because the white background was selected. But if I do the move selected pixels tool, it will only move the selection. It won't move what the selection is, what, what's underneath the selection. So if I move it up to halfway up the J, then I use the blue one again, then it will move this one because it's like I moved the selection. So it may be a little bit confusing, so you might have wondered what the difference between the blue one and the white one is. That is the difference. This is the last of select. Basically, it's all, it's another selection tool, except instead of a rectangle, it does types of circles or round things with no corners. So again, if you hold shift, it will do a perfect circle, okay? If you let go, you can do uh, an, an oval or whatever you call these. So yeah, this is useful for if you wanna do something circular. Let me select that. Next we have the zoom tool, which is pretty self-explanatory. If you left click, you zoom in. If you right click, you zoom out. Now we have another selection tool, but it's sort of different. This is called the magic wand. Basically what this does is, is it selects pixels in, on the same layer that are the, either the exact same color or that are connected to each other. So as you can see, the J here is all black and the background is all white. So if I use the magic wand, if I click the white, it will select everything that is the exact same hue or the exact same color or near the exact same color. Uh, but it won't select the black because of course the black is a different color than the white. So now what I can do is if I go to the move selected tools again, if I move the white out of the way, as you can see, the black J stays exactly where it is because I didn't select it. So the magic wand is really useful if you want to select only certain colors or only, uh, like a like a text which is all the same color uh so you don't have to use the lasso select because if i if i wanted to select the j or ma make the j alone uh i would have to you wouldn't have to use the lasso select and lasso select and have to use it like like this you, that would take way too long so what you can do is use a magic wand you can either select the j itself which is kind of hard since it's really thin but you can do that or you can select the white which is easier and then if you do control if you press control i on your keyboard it reverses your selection so as you can see now instead of the white being selected the j is now selected so if i do control i again now all the white is selected which and also it's uh it it makes everything blue which is the selection so it really helps you with that now we have the hand tool basically just all it is is just move the can the whole canvas around by the way this whole thing is called a canvas the whole project the whole square that's called a canvas now we have the paint bucket tool which makes a selection which paints a selection of the color that you have chosen so uh by the way this is the primary color on the top left and the bottom right is called the secondary color um and usually primary colors are what will be used uh for everything that uses one color but if you're doing like a gradient which does two colors the secondary color will will appear so but the primary color is what uh, you you will use to choose and this is the color wheel which you can drag the circle around to choose your color so again if you have a selection selected i had just used a rectangle select and if you want that selection to be blue you can use the paint bucket tool and click inside the selection and it will make uh every uh, the whole selection blue but again if you try to make if you try to click outside the selection nothing will happen because you are not selected it. So everything, you can't do anything outside if you have selected something. Next, we have a gradient tool, which is something I use a lot for text. So again, if you have a selection, you can do a primary color and then the secondary color, you can make it a different color, any color you want. And the gradient tool will gradually fade from one color to the next. So it will start from blue up here on the top. And if you drag your mouse down or to the side or wherever you want, the uh, it'll make that ramp effect that you see a lot on text so now it went from blue to to red because the my primary color will which is where the first circle will, was and the red color is, is the secondary color and that's where your second dot is the one that you moved your mouse around there we go and as you can see it also makes the the color in between the the, the transition color so blue to red in between would be purple and it does that automatically right there you see a, a hue of purple in between the gradient next we have the paintbrush tool which i've showed you before basically you can just draw anything and the color is the primary color that's chosen if i make the if i make it yellow you can do a yellow paintbrush also you can change the brush width uh up here if you go to brush width there's a one window and the 2000 which of course is humongous as you can see it's way too big so it actually fills the whole selection because it's way too big so if i go to 15 uh and if I make it a different color blue that's what 15 pixels is uh 225 pixels is this big right here so <laughs> there we go you can also change the hardness of the paintbrush so let me just make everything white again by doing selecting the whole canvas you can do Control a to do that to make things easier and doing a white okay 
making everything white again there we go so here's the brush width let me make it uh 90 which is good and also it tells you how big it is exactly with a circle which is really cool let me make the color red or whatever the hardness if you do if you go to zero hardness as you can see the paintbrush is like a really soft paint it's like a it looks like an actual spray paint or something but if i make the hardness all the way up to 100 it's a very hard edged paint as you can see if i zoom in it's all pixels if i go back to zero it's all like a it's blurred on the edges that's basically what hardness does next we have an eraser tool which is uh you can also change the brush width of and the hardness is the same it just blurs the edges more so if i erase something as you can see the edges of the erased selection is blurred if i go to 100 brightness the edges are really jagged right there and you can just erase everything <laughs> there we go now we have the pencil tool which is really not useful at all because it's basically the same as the paintbrush except it does a really thin paintbrush, so I really don't see the need for the pencil tool because you can do the exact same thing with the with a paintbrush on on full hardness on like one pixel. So yeah, exactly. There's, I guess the pencil tool is j a bit more jagged. So maybe if you want something that is really sticks to the sorry, that was the wrong one. If you want if you want something that really sticks to the pixels exactly. You can you can use the pencil tool, but uh, frankly, I don't really see a need for the pencil tool. By the way, guys, if you're wondering if you are confused about what this gray and white checkerboard is, uh, don't worry. This is not what this is not what your image is. That basically tells you that what you're seeing is transparent image. There's nothing there. There's no color. You can see through it if you have something underneath it. Next, we have the color picker tool. So the color picker tool is if you click a certain color on your image, it will change it to that exact color on the color wheel and make it the primary color. So. If I go to the paintbrush tool, and if I do a a black paintbrush, and then a blue paintbrush, and then a red one, the color picker tool is if you click the black, it will make the primary color the exact same color of the the color that you chose on your image. If I if I use the color picker tool and click, if you left click on the blue one, it'll make it blue. Then if you left click on the red, it'll make it red. If you right click, it'll do the secondary color. So now if I right click on, if I right click with my mouse on the black one, the secondary now changes to whatever you clicked on. There we go. Left click does primary. I'm using my left click right now. As you can see on the bottom right, it changes. If I do right click, it changes the secondary color. Pretty useful and I use it a lot. Next we have the clone stamp tool right here. So I already have, I already used this before. That's why you're seeing two circles. You actually won't have this at the start. What you need to do is if you have Let's, I'll show you an example. This is basically a, like a Photoshop type thing where it clones one part of the image to another part of the image wherever you want. So if I do a blue paintbrush and and then a, a red paintbrush, if I use the clone stamp tool, what you have to do is you can change the brush width again. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do 80. If you hold control and click on one part of the image that you want to clone, then you click on another part of the image. It will clone whatever uh, is on the first I can see I have a circle on the right which is following the circle that's in on over my mouse so if I uh, hold if I put that first circle over one thing it will clone it to another part of the image so if I put if I put it over here I would do blue which is it's sort of hard to see it so what I would do is actually put the um, if I let me delete everything first so if you have I'll show you again with two paintbrush tools here's red and then here's blue if I use the clone step you have to press hold control click on the part of the image and then click another part i would put it right beside it so now as you can see if i put the circle that is on it that's not over my mouse over something of the image it will clone exactly that to where this mouse is which is really which is for the second circle which is really cool if i do it with red as you can see the first the top left circle which is following my mouse is over and over the blue one it will clone it to the circle where my mouse is over, which is really cool. It's like those Photoshop, it's a Photoshop type effect where you can clone one part of an image. It's really fun to play around and it's really useful if you want to clone like a landscape. So yeah, it's a pretty useful tool and I'm really glad Paint Diamond has it. Now we have the recolor tool. Basically this uh, changes uh, anything that has color to the color you have here. So if I, do, if I want to change everything to green, you go to the recolor tool, choose green, make everything green. Oh yeah, it only does the one color. You know, it, it, it's Act, it acts like a magic wand where it only changes the color if it's one solid color. So if I want to do the blue, you choose the blue first and then there you go. This looks like a mess right now, so I'm just going to do Control A on my keyboard and press Delete. Next we have the text tool, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just adds text. You can choose any font here with a drop-down menu. 
I'm just gonna do this font. This is what I use a lot for my thumbnails. You can change the, the size of the font. Bold, italics, underline, it's everything you have you, you want to do, you can add here. I'm just gonna type in Justin the Oreo. It's a bit too big. So I'm um, gonna make the size smaller, 96. There we go. You can move it around with this thing right here. I'm, I'm gonna make it even smaller. There we go. Also, as you can see, it's green. And if you're wondering why it's green, it's because I have green selected. So if you, uh, if you're still on typing mode, because uh, if you actually un, if you click another part of the text, it will lock it. So if, make sure if you want to edit your text, you can't edit your text. But there's actually a plugin on Paytonet which lets you edit your text. But I don't have it installed. So once you, if, if I click away from the, if I go to another tool and do an amount, it move it around and stuff. I can do whatever I want to the text. But if I go to the text tool, I can't edit the text already. It, it's locked in place. If, if you made a spelling mistake, you would have to, um, un, you would have to delete the whole text basically. So that kind of sucks about it, but uh, you can install a, a plugin that lets you edit text, but that, that's for another video. So now uh, what you can do to the text is you can use your other tools to edit it and stuff. You can resize it, make it like this if you want. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can rotate it. I forgot to show you a rotate tool. If you go outside of the selection and you see those two arrows uh, that are kind of curved, you can rotate things right there. That is using the move select pixels tool. Now we have the line and curve. So basically what this does is it make lines. So let me just delete the text here. You can, again, you can change the brush width. Let me make it a bit small, like maybe 20 is good. And you can even change the style of your line. So basically what it does is it makes a, a real, a straight, a perfectly straight line for you, which is really useful because the paint, the paintbrush tool, of course, it's free mouse or free hand. So it will, you know, if you move or wiggle, you won't have a perfectly straight line. So if you want to make a perfectly straight line, the line tool is what you need. And once you're done making the line, it actually gives you four circles in between the line. And what you can do is if you, if you hold and drag them, you can curve the line and the curve is like a perfect curve and you can use these lines so you can make like a cool s with it there you go there you can do whatever you want to the line uh if you want to make it straight again you can't <laughs> so you're gonna have to press undo on everything you, this is the history tab or window here you have to go back to the first draw line curve then then it's will be perfectly straight again finally the last tool we have before uh the video comes to an end is the shapes tool which does exactly what you want it to do is it draws shapes for you so there are three types you can do you can just draw the outline of shapes which uh it does the color of your color tool right here you can do just a draw filled shape so it's one solid color or you can do a draw filled with outline which will make the inside your primary your the inside the, it will make the inside your secondary color excuse me, my secondary color is red my outline my primary color is green so my outline will be secondary color you can you have more a lot of shapes here you can do arrows you can do if you already have a shape selected it will change automatically you can have a six point star there you go <laughs> anything you want the customizability is all here you can check mark let me just delete everything Control a delete now those are all the tools if you want to see more of it definitely leave it in the comments below also if you have any questions or concerns with anything you need help definitely leave in the comments below i'll try to help you or the, the community here who are very nice people will also try to help you if they know what they're doing so thank you guys so much for watching the second episode of my beginner's guide to paint.net hope you all enjoyed it and i hope it helped you out thanks for watching guys peace out